Uh, so this is my shield eye. And today, there are three blood points. Uh, number one is that uh, IM, or atrophic gastritis, is the high-risk condition for gastric cancer, maybe two times or more high risk. And the second one is that this kind of condition may affect the severance in trouble, maybe one year, two year, or zero year, I mean the, meaning that you don't require any severance endoscopy. So it's quite important to identify the status of atrophic gastritis and IM. And then if you identify the high-risk condition for gastric cancer, you should be very much motivated to take an accurate biopsy based on accurate optical diagnosis. So these three points are something we would like to emphasize in this session, I hope. Uh, so let's start with the endoscopic diagnosis of the intestinal metaplasia under white light endoscopy. Uh, as you can see here, maybe there are some, some characteristics such as a whitish appearance, rough structure of the surface structure, or villous component on the surface of the mucosa. But right now, I would say it is very difficult to identify this kind of the structure in an accurate way under the white light endoscopy because it's very subjective and also the change is quite tiny. And of course, uh, intensive training is required to get familiar with this kind of tiny appearance. And when it comes to the accuracy, honestly speaking, the sensitivity to the, uh, to the intestinal metaplasia is not optimal when it comes to the white light endoscopy observation. Uh, therefore, uh, the other measures should be recommended. Uh, for example, chromoendoscopy or the virtual chromoendoscopy such as BLI or NBI. And the other nice thing about using this form of um, uh, imaging is you can appreciate the atrophic ball a little bit more clearly but here's i haven't seen an atrophic border unless it's possibly along uh, it's not really easy not really easy to demonstrate whereas the pit pattern in the body so one of the easiest thing to do if you suspect that there may be atrophy in intestinal metaplasia is to go straight to the body and uh, try and ascertain whether you have a normal uh, perpendicular pit pattern where you have dots or a rigid pattern. If you look here, you look at the mucosa, there are dots, but most of the time you've lost. So here you can see if we freeze here, you can see there are dots corresponding to a per perpendicular uh, pit pattern. So this is not entirely characteristic, but it's looking like there is panatrophic change. Um, so have we seen enough now for you, or do we need to look a little bit so more to, carefully? So to finish off, you, you, I, I change from white light to enhanced imaging. So you go over exactly the same <coughs> spatials. Um, helicobacter testing, important? Yeah, very important. Yeah. Because you, you want to slow down any progression. Yeah. Um, uh, and... Uh, with data particularly come out of China now with test and treat, um, H. pylori eradication does reduce the incidence of, of uh, gastric cancer. Um, and the same holds true with the atrophic stomach. So I suppose the question is, is you know, if you halt the histogenesis, have you halted it at a point yeah, yeah, exactly. where you can still reduce the risk of colorectal cancer? Um, and the answer to that in most cases, yes. So then you have to start thinking about, okay, I'm going to take more proximal biopsies to, to, to make a diagnosis. So do, will you do protocol biopsies here? Yes, so we'd, we'd follow the Sydney classification or the combined Kimura sydney classification, um, in which case we would take biopsies from the antrum, uh, the incisura, uh, the lesser curve, um, and the mid-greater curve. And if you want to try and accurately stage, because the problem is if you take blind biopsies, you may miss areas of intestinal metaplasia, you may miss areas of atrophy, so you may understage the patient. So what you would try and aim to do is look for areas of where you expect intestinal metaplasia is most prominent and target your biopsies from those. So I put here an ideal protocol for pre-malignant conditions. And in the boxes, I've used the word Barrett's, but certainly on the back of what I've just heard, uh, you could equally put atrophic gastritis in here. So you are the end, everyday endospis in that first box. You're not a Barrett's or an atrophic uh, expert. 
and you find you've made the diagnosis because you've just seen all this lovely learning on geeks. And uh, what you want is um, for that person to go down the right pathway. Now, from what I've heard, it